you are alive, you have another opportunity to begin again. You got to get up on your own. You got to be able to make big decisions on your own. You got to lose weight on your own. There are a myriad of targets you have to hit by yourself. Oftentimes, it's the people that go away into a very healthy isolation to equip themselves, to condition themselves, to educate themselves, to come out empowered. And so you got to get into this workspace where you can do it by yourself. And I know you're fractured and I know you're bleeding in places nobody can see. But if you shut it down, you can heal. You're standing at the precipice, the edge of the greatest move in your life. And, and, and the time is now like never before to take a leap of faith. Stop waiting to feel like it. Stop waiting until you see it. Stop waiting for somebody to come and save you. Nobody's coming to rescue you. The question is, how bad do you want this? You feel like you're underpaid and undervalued and overlooked, but listen, get up! This is the day that everything changes. Go through the process. Go through the mud. Run in the rain. Dance in the snow. Inhale. Exhale. Come back and shock the world! Find a mirror and tell yourself, I got this today. <laughs> I got this today. I'm going to make it. I'm going to create it. I'm going to build it. All I have is all I need. Resources may come and go. People may come and go. But I've got a vision and I've got the provision and I've got the determination and the discipline to hit my aims and to punch through my target. You may be tired, you may be broken, you may be hurting, people may have betrayed you, lied on you, left you, but you refuse to give up. It takes faith to pull away from everything that is familiar, to step into uncharted territory, to become the person you were born to be. It takes faith. Everybody wants to grow a little bit taller, so we gotta push a little bit harder. Life is lived on levels. And I can't bring my spotter with me. The spotter cannot walk with you all of your life. At some point, you gotta say, I got this. Push! Can you walk away from everything for 30 days? Just one month, 720 hours. Imagine who you can be in 30 days. You got one life to live. Rain, sleep, or snow. The time is now. Every day that you wake up, remember someone else did not. You are alive for a reason. Why on earth are you here? This is your day. You've got a window. You've got another 24 hours because you may not make it to tomorrow. And I'm just wondering what you're going to do with the day. The reason why days often feel meaningless and mundane is because we are directionless. you got to get some direction. I'm just wondering what are you going to do in this next 24 hours that you did not do. I'm just wondering if you're going to level up two millimeters more than you did yesterday. Are you going to get better? Are you going to get stronger? Are you going to get wiser? Are you going to see this thing differently? I'm just wondering when are you going to see the power of 24 hours? That you did not have to wake up. That God did not have to give you another opportunity to be here. Another opportunity to forgive somebody. Another opportunity to let it go. Another opportunity to look up and get up. I'm just wondering when are you going to seize the opportunity? Accept where you are. Get cognizant about your money. Get cognizant about your relationships. 
Where are you mentally? Where are you spiritually and emotionally and financially and economically? Are you driving what you are destined to drive? Where's your health? Where's your heart? Let's get aware of where we are. This is my day to read a new book. This is my day to start a journey. This is my day to make an investment. This is my day to invest in myself. This is my day and this is my time and it's my turn to crush this day. This is the day I learn like I never have. This is the day I invest like I never have. This is the day I take it seriously. I've got one window. I may not be here tomorrow. I'm just wondering if you're going to rise and see the opportunity. Get up, get up, get up. You've got a day to conquer. If the day's going to be good, I gotta heal from the mistakes that were made yesterday. I've gotta believe that I don't have to make the same mistakes. It's time to heal. Today I heal. Today I heal from every mistake that is made. Today I heal from everything that I said that I could have said better and everything that was said to me that I wish was never said. I heal today from the people that pushed me verbally but did not support me physically, that were never present. Today I heal, I heal, I heal. I heal from what I did not have. I heal from what I did have that I did not want. Today I heal. After we heal, we have to acknowledge what went wrong. What could I have done differently? What boundaries did I allow to be breached? relationally, financially, with my investments, with my mindset. Where did I put my energy and I didn't get anything back in return? It's like investing in a vending machine with a sign on it that says out of order. And I'm convinced that many of us invest in people and places that are just simply out of order. And this is why we're drained. And this is why we're tired. And this is why we're weary and well-doing. And this is why the day is mundane and it's the same old, same old. Something's gotta change with you. I'm just wondering if you're gonna repeat the cycle. If the redundancy of mediocrity is gonna continue, we've got purpose and we've got fulfillment and we've got destiny breathing down our necks. Let's accept the truth. This is the only way the day matters is if we get aware of what's happening and what's going on. What has my attention? Do I have the attention span of a toddler or a champion? And so once we accept where we are and we accept that truth, we got to give ourselves time to heal. We got to learn from not only our mistakes, but learn from others' mistakes. We have to study why we fail, how we fail, and we've got to ensure that we never do it again. If you're going to win the war for the day, you're going to have to have a high threshold for pain. You will be offended. People will let you down. People will lie to you. Places, circumstances, life will unfold and unravel. This life will knock you in your mouth. But you got to stay focused. Even when it's painful, even when we're ostracized, even when we're excommunicated and ghosted, it may hurt, but that pain will subside. If you're going to crush this day, this week, this month, this quarter, and this year, and if the rest of your life is going to be the best of your life, you're going to have to think differently, plan differently, set the goal, and you're going to have to write it down. You've got to get clear, you've got to get specific, and once you get specific, what you wrote down mandates what you do. I said it before, I say it again. Oftentimes, the day feels mundane and meaningless because we are directionless. Write the vision 
down. Get clear, get specific, write it down. Document it, get serious about it. Write it, read it. If you want to see success, then you need to make the planning stages significant and you need to see the value in the process. We want wealth, but we don't want a plan. We want success, but we don't want significance. We want connection, but we don't want correction. I've got to write it down and not only write it down, but I need my circle of accountability to correct things that may be wrong. Because if you're trying to build this dream and walk in your destiny by yourself, if you think you can pull it off with no help, with no purpose partner, then it's too small. I'm speaking healing over you. I'm speaking breakthrough over you. I'm speaking that you walk into your future, that you'll let go of what was to step into what is. I, I, I believe this for you. I believe that as you become and not just do, that what you seek will pursue you. Destiny will begin to chase you down. No matter how far you have sunk, no matter how hard you have fallen, you've got enough grit, you've got enough grace, you've got enough faith, you've got enough courage to stand up. It's time to rise. This is your day. Get up and conquer your day. You will need to normalize in your mind walking alone. You got to get up on your own. You got to be able to make big decisions on your own. You got to lose weight on your own. There are a myriad of targets you have to hit by yourself. Oftentimes, it's the people that go away into a very healthy isolation to equip themselves, to condition themselves, to educate themselves, to come out empowered. And so you got to get into this workspace where you can do it by yourself. It doesn't matter if it's the office. It doesn't matter if it's the gym. It doesn't matter if it's the court. It doesn't matter if it's the field. It doesn't matter what arena you are stepping into. You got to get to that place where you don't need attention, you don't need recognition, you don't need the accolades. You just want to put in the work and the next time you surface, the next time you show up, it's game over. If you throw me to the wolves, I'll return, leading the pack. You see, a wolf is willing to leave its pack behind and find a new one. The time is now. We must adopt the wolf mentality. Be relentless. Resilient. Never quit. And never look back. I know what it feels like to be fractured and falling into pieces. But you gotta silence the voices in your head that are telling you you need a shortcut, you need a cheat code. Eliminate the negative, self-sabotaging voices. Find a mirror and tell yourself, I got this today. <laughs> I got this today. I'm gonna make it. I'm going to create it. I'm going to build it. All I have is all I need. Resources may come and go. People may come and go. But I've got a vision and I've got the provision and I've got the determination and the discipline to hit my aims and to punch through my targets. Can you do this thing without attention? Can you do this thing without public affirmation? Can you do this thing without people telling you that you are everything to them? Without people applauding you and saying you're great, you're awesome, oh, you're amazing. Can you do this thing alone? Can you be your own cheerleader for a moment? Can you be your own hype man for a moment? Can you tell you I'm good enough? I got this, that all I have is all I need. I believe in friendships and partnerships and collaboration and counsel and advice. But there are some things in life you are going to have to do alone. There are some arenas you're going to have to show up in and nobody is coming. Nobody's coming to save you. Nobody's coming to help you. Nobody's coming to show you a shortcut. You got to figure this out on your own. 
for most of us. Nobody's going to feed us. You got to feed yourself. You want to lose the weight? You want to reach your target, your aim? You got to put the work in. You got to feed yourself the food that is required to power the body that you want. It's not about trying to be a lone ranger more than it is about taking responsibility and prioritizing yourself first. There are some things in life nobody's going to show up. It's all on you. I need you to find a mirror right now and tell yourself, it's all on me. It's all on me. This one is all on me. When I go get this degree, ultimately, I got to go get this degree. When I go get this certification, ultimately, I got to get this certification. I've got to finish strong. I've got to condition myself. I've got to go get the education. I've got to get out of bed. I've got to go to the gym. I got to eat clean. Nobody's going to feed me. I got to feed myself. If you're listening to me right now in the gym, on your walk, on your run, you're lifting, you're building, you're creating, you're imagining something, I just need you to push and I need you to believe that you don't need the spider, that you don't need the training wheels, that it is your time, that it is your turn and you no longer need help, you no longer need assistance in this area of your life. Push like you have never pushed before. Give it everything you have because that spotter is not going to be there for you for the rest of your life. If you want to grow one millimeter more, if you want to push, just push a little harder. Everybody wants to grow a little bit taller, so we got to push a little bit harder. Life is lived on levels and I can't bring my spotter with me. The spotter cannot walk with you all of your life. At some point, you got to say, I got this. I got this. Look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I got this. I got this. If I have to do it alone, I will. Because to fulfill this vision, to fulfill my destiny, ultimately, I am depending on the God that put the dream in my heart and myself. With tears in your eyes, with broken hands and a heavy heart, if nobody is there and you are in a room by yourself, start alone, but get started. Help is coming, but everything rises and falls on you. Oftentimes the people that you wanted in your life will reject you and that rejection is protection. It is a blessing because it's the same people that rejected you that will need you and that will rely on you. Come on, how many people have you tried to help and you were bleeding, battered, and broken? How many times have you called for help and the help was toxic? Come on, how many times have you asked for advice and the advice brought more adversity? Take responsibility for yourself. Take control of your life. I need you to understand your worth and stop playing the blame game. Because nine times out of ten, the people that hurt you, you brought them into your life. And so you got to reflect over the past. You have to acknowledge the present. And you have to cast vision for your future. And take accountability. And kill the self-condemnation. Stop tearing yourself down on the inside. Stop saying one thing, thinking another, and acting in a whole other way. How you think is how you talk, and how you talk must be how you behave. Because your thoughts will determine your behavior and your behavior determines your future. And so everything's got to line up. And so you need an alignment, an internal alignment. I can't align you. you got to make a decision to align yourself. You can hear a speech and make a decision, but every day you have to make that decision. That decision has to evolve into discipline. And discipline turns into mastery. And mastery builds momentum. You're not going to always get it right, but you got to keep going. When you start alone, you possess a power that few can handle. The reason why you're so frustrated and angry and bitter is because you're functioning 
on an old software internally. And life is demanding an upgrade. And you keep pushing off the alarm, saying, remind me tomorrow. It's time for the next version of yourself. Snap out of it. You're going to have to sacrifice who you used to be. Sacrifice is what's going to get you in the door. Sacrifice is what's going to have you seated at the table. College is not high school. And the real world is not college. And so you can't keep showing up the old version of yourself. And so you've got to learn how to sacrifice your time. You've got to sacrifice. When you want to sleep, you have to wake up. When you want to watch that movie, you got to read that book. If you want the future, you got to sacrifice your time. Time. Where we spend our time is what we value most. Get out of this 30-day mentality and commit for the rest of your life. I, I need you to get out of your comfort zone. You can't be successful with the companion of comfort. Comfort and success cannot walk together. Boss up and admit that you are afraid. You are afraid to fulfill destiny. You are afraid to manifest. You are afraid to evolve. You are afraid to give it everything you have because you are afraid that people will reject you. You are afraid to change. You are afraid to move. Boss up and admit that you are afraid. And I'm just believing that today is the day that you break through. I need you to tell yourself, I am not afraid. I am not afraid of pursuing my objectives. I am not afraid of focusing. I am not afraid of sacrificing. I am not afraid of giving it everything I have. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what I'll look like. I'll look crazy if I have to to fulfill my destiny. This is my time. Late nights, early mornings, sometimes no friends, no family. I don't know what your sacrifice is. You just may have to give everything you have. But in the end, it'll be worth it. The future is very expensive. I, I don't know what it is that you want to do, but everybody's got something they want to do. Everybody's got something they want to become. Everybody's got somewhere they believe they've been destined to go. And oftentimes we don't hit these targets because we're not considering the cost. Then I just want to share with you things that you need to start sacrificing right now. Number one, your time. You got to get used to sacrificing your time. If you're going to achieve it, if you're going to become it, if you're going to go somewhere, then you're going to learn how to have to sacrifice your time. You can't have the future and you don't know how to wake up at three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. You can't have the future. You will not be able to manifest if you're sleeping when the world sleeps. So you got to learn how to get up when everybody's sleeping. You only have 24 hours in a day. You got to learn to manage the time that is given to you. This means that you can't binge watch your favorite television show every day. This means that you can't be on social media every day. This means that you can't do whatever you want all day and think you're going to manifest and become this person and achieve this feat. It's not going to happen. Number two, you got to surrender comfort. I, I need you to get out of your comfort zone. If you're going to be successful, if you're going to achieve it, if you're going to become it, you've got to break out of your comfort zone. Some of you, you have financial goals, you have relational goals, you have health goals, but you're comfortable. You're comfortable in the current toxic relationship you're in. You're comfortable being overweight. But I'm just wondering if there's anybody that's listening to me that's just flat out tired of being comfortable. Number three, past versions of yourself. There is an irritation, there is an anguish and a pain that we all carry when we show up in a new season, the old version of ourselves. Every season requires a new version of yourself. 
another version of discipline and focus and intentionality. So you gotta sacrifice the old you. I know you keep celebrating small wins and what you accomplished five years ago, two years ago, what you did in high school. I need you to find a mirror. I need you to say goodbye to the old version of yourself. In the next three to six months, you're gonna make you proud. The next thing that's gotta go is fear, pride, and ego. For many of us, fear is disguised as rational and practical. And, and fear is disguised as a planning agent. I'm just planning out the process and I'm just gonna wait. I'm just kinda walking myself through everything and, 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 and processing everything. And so fear cloaks, fear disguises itself as, as process. And, and I'm talking to you. I need you to find a mirror and I need you to bind up the spirit of fear and I need you to tell yourself, I am not afraid. I am not afraid. If you were to ask me, what do I fear? I don't fear starting. I fear never starting and sleeping on my potential. I'm terrified of not manifesting and becoming the version of myself I was destined to be. So the next thing you're gonna to have to sacrifice is that vice. Now listen, I, I don't know what your vice is. If you're trying to lose weight, your vice could be ice cream, chips, cupcakes, cookies. If you're trying to be financially fit, your vice could be splurging on clothes and entertainment and food and recreation. Sometimes you're gonna to have to surrender that month, that quarter, that year. It takes a lifetime of discipline. Can you surrender what you have possessed? Can you surrender what is possessing you? Some of you are possessed by social media. It's no longer a servant, it is a master. Social media is a beautiful servant, but it is a terrible master. Can you surrender social media? Can you surrender your time? Can you surrender yourself? Can you surrender your mind? Can you surrender your will? Can you stop choosing what's killing you? If you're going to achieve it, if you're going to manifest, if you're going to do this thing, then you're going to need some stamina. Come on, believe it. Come on, you got to start speaking that stamina over your life, speaking that endurance over your life. Believe it, believe it. If you're going to be extraordinary, and you can't make ordinary sacrifices. There are levels to sacrifice. There's sacrifices that everybody makes. Sacrifices in every scene of our lives. And then there are some extraordinary sacrifices. You can't have the future if you can't surrender something that's no longer serving you. You cannot manifest. You cannot become the next version of yourself. You cannot experience a higher quality of life unless you sacrifice. There are some things that you love too much. There's some people that you've kept in your life. They are toxic, they add no value. They are no longer serving your vision. It's time for the next version of yourself. Snap out of it. This version of you is not gonna carry you in this next season. You're gonna have to sacrifice who you used to be. When you wake up early, it's just you. The world can wait, right? Emails can wait. Text messages can wait. The boardroom can wait. The playing field can wait. The court can wait. Everything can wait. And I can get dialed in with what I've been called to do. I can get dialed in with why I'm here. What is my purpose without any outside influences or stimuli? I don't need coffee right now. I don't need alcohol. I don't need an outside stimuli to get my day jump started. I just need to get up and get dialed in. We want to be successful, but we don't want to get dialed in on a morning routine. It's unbelievable to me how much we want success, but we don't want structure. Put away the devices, put away the distractions, put away the outside stimuli and the influences and all of the voices and get dialed in. If you're listening to me, let this be a moment of transformation and motivation, but let this moment not just move you, but change you to take action. Why am I here? What have I been placed on this earth to do? 
All of a sudden, when I wake up and the world is sleeping, I get a different perspective. I can get my agenda, my targets, and my aims crystallized in my head. And whatever becomes clear in my head, yo, I can hold in my head. Period. All of us has this power within us, this force of nature that we have not tapped into. There's another level. Life is lived on levels. And these levels are unlocked by taking action. My question to you is, will you take action and do something out of your paradigm? If you're going to obliterate programs and patterns, then you've got to do something different. Shake it up. Wake up early, man. Get up. It's time for an identity shift. It's time for elevation in your relationships and in your health and in your mindset and in your approaches and in your strategies. It's time to get into this space of innovation. It's your time. It's your turn. The wait is over. Get up and give back to yourself. If you're listening to me, get up, get up, get up, get up. It's time to go. Most people don't feel like waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Do it because you don't feel like doing it. You need to be the person that does it even if they don't feel it, but they do it because they're called to. Everybody wants to unleash greatness within them and everybody wants to be their best selves. But you're going to have to do stuff you don't feel like doing in order to get there. And so if we want to step into this transformative experience, then I need to have a competitive advantage over the competition. Well, you say, man, I'm in competition with nobody, just me. And I get that. And I've said that. But the truth of the matter is, is if you don't do something the other man is not doing, then you're going to get knocked off. If you want longevity, if you want sustainability, if you want to scale, if you want peak performance, if you're going to do something in your bloodline, if you're going to pass something down generationally, if you're going to be a light, if you're going to do something that's never been done, then sometimes you're going to have to get up when you don't feel like it. If we're going to unleash this untapped potential, then I have to do something that's going to break the current paradigms that I've been living under. I got to do something that's going to obliterate the status quo. What you're going to discover about waking up at a certain time, specifically at a time you don't feel like it, that after a while, you will love it. Once you get that itch, once you smell that potential, all of a sudden the world opens up to you and 3 a.m., 4 a.m. is no longer a burden. It's just what you do. And you don't even need an alarm clock to go off because your passion awakens you. Your passion. You can go three, four hours of sleep and you're ready to go again because something inside of you is saying, I got to achieve something. You got work to do. So make that decision that there's no turning back. And so we want to become unstoppable. And we want to be resilient. But we don't want to do what's impossible for most people. For most people, 3 a.m. is just like it's impossible in their mind. They don't even think about it. It's something they're just not going to do. They're going to get up at 7, 8, 9, 10. And so you've got to do what's impossible for most people in order to be that unstoppable force of nature. And I am an advocate for rest. Don't get me wrong. Like, we got to get rest. We need to sleep. I understand that. But there are seasons and timetables and there are rooms I've got to walk into and there are hands that I have to shake and there are contracts that I have to sign and there are deals that I have to close that are going to require me to lose sleep sometimes. And so if I believe in the power of the future, then I got to be willing to get up. Break through. Do something you've never done. 
Start your day at a time where it is a sacrifice until it becomes an obsession. I get up early when the competition is sleeping. I get a competitive advantage in the marketplace. I get peace and quiet and some solitude where I can focus on me. I can condition myself. I can prepare myself. I can accomplish more by getting up earlier. When people are sleeping and I am working, by the time they wake up, bam, I'm already done. I'm done. I'm in a flow state. I can break out of the monotony. I can break out of the mundane. I can snap out of autopilot and step into that powerful driving force that is within me to help me unleash my untapped potential, period. Waking up early gets me in touch with myself. It gets me in tune. It gets me in motion. It gets me in flow where I can perform my best. And I can get hyper-focused on what matters most and I can eliminate distractions and everything that was hindering me, all of a sudden, wham, I hit a state of elevation. Everything that was toxic, everything that was not for me, everything that was not life-giving, I can get very clear on the future. It is time for transformation. It is time to unlock resilience and ignite energy and vitality. It's going to increase productivity. It's going to shift your identity. And it's going to unlock the dimension of unstoppable momentum. If you want this, then try it for one week. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know what you've been called to do, what you've been called to accomplish, what you've been destined to build. It's time to take a deep dive into the deeper parts of yourself, the parts of you that nobody sees. When you take something personal, it gets personal. I'm not just putting on the front. I'm not just here in public to make you smile and applaud me and support me and make comments and share my video. I'm not here. I make this thing personal. Everything that I do in public, I've done it in private. And so I'm just asking you, don't just scream on a stage or be connected to millionaires or strive to be a CEO or an investor or a politician or an athlete or a musician or a singer. I'm just wondering, can you conquer in the dark? When you make it personal, what you do behind closed doors matters. So I'm just wondering when you're gonna make it personal. When you're gonna make it about what it looks like that nobody sees. The part of you that nobody sees, where's your integrity behind the scenes? Come on, where are your values behind the scenes? What do your habits look like behind the scenes? Come on, what kind of work are you putting in behind the scenes? Come on, drop down and give me 50. Come on, write it again. Come on, believe it again. Come on, sing again, record the song again. Come on, I'm talking to that athlete. I'm talking to that musician. Come on, who are you out there? That philosopher, that engineer, that thought leader, that critical thinker, come on, that captain of industry, I'm talking to you when your personal life lines up with your purpose. Then public authority is yours. You want influence? I'm not talking about just fame. I'm talking about influence, the power to change people's lives. Can you stretch yourself? Can you condition yourself? Come on, can you believe again? Can you see it again? Can you write again? Can you make this thing personal? That it doesn't start with the people connected to you. It starts with you. It doesn't even start with your past. It starts with where you are and where you're going. Can you look ahead? Can you stretch for it? Can you condition yourself? Can you prepare yourself for the next thing? Come on, make it personal. It doesn't start with everybody. It starts with me because people will leave you for dead. And then what's your why? What did God put in you? Release it to the world. If it's going to be personal, make it personal. Don't just be great in public, be great in private. What you do in dark, if I pulled up your search history, what would I find? Would you still be an example to the world? If I went through your closet, if I went through your basement, if I went through your attic, if I went through your center council, if I went through your house, how personal is your purpose? Every single day, you are either losing ground or gaining ground. The choice is yours. But this time, make it personal.
If you're going to do it, if you're going to accomplish it, if you're going to achieve it, even if you're confused and it's cold and it looks crazy, and you're going to need to know the difference between contribution and commitment, because they're two very different things. See, everybody wants to contribute to destiny, but nobody wants to be committed to destiny. You want to contribute to the idea that you can be something. You want to contribute to the idea that something's going to come of the sacrifice that you have made, but you have not sacrificed. You have not suffered. You are not committed. When you are committed, you give everything you have. Every single week, every single day, every single hour, every single minute, 720 hours a month, you are beating on your craft. Even when you're at work, you're dreaming, you're thinking, you're vision casting, you're writing it down, making it play, communicating to your destiny connections so that it can become a reality. If you can see it in your head, you can hold it in your hands. But the question I wanna answer is, are you committed? I'm just wondering if you are bold enough, daring enough, if you can believe in your dream again, if you can get committed. See, when you get personal, when you make it personal, everything changes. Because you see, you made it about your girlfriend last time. You made it about your boyfriend last time. You made it about your kids last time. And your kids started acting up and then you let the dream go. It's got to start with you and God first. Listen, God put a gift inside of everybody and it's our responsibility to release it to the world. This time, it's personal. So do it for your loved ones. Do it for your wife. Do it for your husband. Do it for your children. Do it for generations to come. Come on, after you're dead and gone, what will they say about what you did? Yes, there's so many people depending on you, but it's got to start with you and the man upstairs. What do he put in you? Make it personal. Everything in my life breathes and eats this purpose that I have. I gotta make it personal. It's, it's, it starts with me. When it starts with me, it ends with me. I don't know where you are in your game of life. You may be in your third quarter. You may be in your fourth quarter. Come on, you're not gonna live forever. Not in this world, come on. You may be in your first quarter, your, your second half, and this time it's got to be personal. See, last time you were just running through the plays. Last time you were just running the songs that you rehearsed in rehearsal. Last time you were just going through the motions and you got numb, come on, and you got tired and weary, and now you're broken and bitter and angry because you lost. And I'm just wondering if you're courageous enough, bold enough, if you have enough faith, come on, if you have enough inside of you resilience, said, come back to the scene and make it personal. It's rain, sleet, or snow, keep building. And so this time it's gotta be personal. And you may not feel qualified. You may not feel like you are educated enough. You may not feel like you're connected enough. You may not think that enough people are aware of you, cognizant of you, because you don't have a blue check and you're not a celebrity yet. But you gotta work hard in silence. You gotta work when nobody's watching. You gotta sacrifice behind the scenes. You gotta take it personal. When you take it personal, your private life changes. Everybody wants public authority, but nobody wants private discipline. When your habits change behind the scenes, when your private life begins to shift, when you put aside the things that are not serving you, if you can make it personal, it's personal. It doesn't start with them and they. It starts with me. It starts with me. So make it personal. Let yourself go. Fall free into it. Step into it. You are worthy. You are an unrepeatable miracle and there is none like you in all the earth. There will never be another you. Your DNA, your fingerprint. Come on, your gait, your presence, your authenticity. Come on, you're special. You're special and you're necessary. Sometimes I gotta look myself in the mirror and ask myself, is that all you got? Come on, you're prepared, you're conditioned, you've been beaten, you've been battered, you've been broken, you've been left for dead, 
but there's more because you're breathing and you feel it. So if you can feel it, you can push it, so push past. The truth of the matter is, that's not all you have. There's more left in you. I know you're tired. I know you're weary. I know you've been brought to tears. All the blood, all the sweat, all the sacrifice, all of the suffering. I know you want to quit right now, but this is not the time to let go. This is not the time to doubt. This is not the time to quit. Keep going. Use it to your advantage. See the pain as a stage. See the pain as a plane. See the pain as an opportunity. You gave me an opportunity to reinvent myself. You gave me an opportunity to come out of my grave that you put me in. You left me for dead. I'm coming out alive. I'm coming out kicking. I'm coming out swinging. You left me and thought I wouldn't overcome. You forgot about me. You let go and thought I couldn't survive it. But I'm here. It's not always about people. Sometimes life, oftentimes, most of the times, life will bloody your nose. Life will leave you in a cardiac arrest. Life will leave you in an accident. Life will knock you upside your head. And there you get back up again. Use the pain, because there's more left. I'm talking to that person in the hospital bed. I'm talking to that person that lost their mother. I'm talking to that person that lost their father. I'm talking to that person who didn't get picked on the team. I'm talking to that stay-at-home mom. I'm talking to that future engineer. I'm talking to that future entrepreneur, that hustler. I'm talking to that person who's been called to do something nobody's done in their family. I know you're going through an unprecedented amount of pain, but you can press through it if you can feel it, you can lift it. The time is now to do what has never been done. Use the pain! Use the pain! Use the pain! So I hear the crowds calling. And even if they're silent, I will call myself. Why is it that we go through life and we feel like we can live without pain, that we can avoid pain, that we can go under it or go around it? Pain is like pressure. And without pressure, there is no diamond. And I'm just wondering if there's anybody out there that's listening to me that is sick and tired of complaining about the pain. I don't make enough. They didn't believe in me. They weren't there. They didn't see it. They didn't pick me. I didn't get the raise. I didn't get the promotion. She walked out on me. He abused me. My kids are ignoring me. My teenagers are driving me crazy. I'm just wondering if there's anybody that want to stop complaining about it and is going to use it to your advantage. Imagine if you could use pain as a fuel. Imagine if you could use the pain as a passport. Imagine if you could use the pain to push you, to condition you, to prepare you for the stages and the rooms you've got to walk into and the tables you've got to sit at and the stages you have to stand on. What if the pain can make you better? What if the pain could build muscle? What if the pain could cause you to reach higher, to leap farther, to run faster? What if the pain could help you? What if all pain isn't hurt, but it's help? Because you wouldn't have prayed like you pray had you not been hurt. You wouldn't love like you love had you not been hurt because you know what it's like to hate somebody. So you refuse to go down that path. Use the pain. A musician plays his instrument, play pain, play it. When pain shows up at your door, when people try to inject it, inflict it, use it to your advantage. Oftentimes, it feels like it is impossible, an insurmountable feat to get past the beating. But as long as I can feel it, I'm not in a state of paralysis. If you can feel it, you can move it. I can feel this, I can move this. I'm not paralyzed, I can feel this. It's heavy, but it's gotta get out of my way. When life throws you a weight, lift it. Ah, ah. 
I'm not complaining because life got heavier. I'm celebrating because I'm getting stronger. Let's go! Use the pain! Your perspective is everything. You gotta see this thing differently. You gotta find a mirror and see this thing differently. And I gotta speak these affirmations and I have to believe, I have to believe, even if I'm bleeding, even if I'm broken, I have to believe that this came to help me, not hurt me. It made me better. I'm not bitter, I'm wiser. I'm conditioned now, I see this thing differently now. I'm able to move and navigate and breathe different and talk different and walk different and build differently. I'm not building out of anger and revenge. I'm building from a place of abundance. Pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. You cannot live without pain. But how you navigate that pain will determine how you propel into your purpose. Use the pain, use the pain to push you into a place of abundance. Use the pain to push you into a place where your very existence is life-giving. Use the pain, not for revenge, but for fulfillment. I, I don't want you to die because you wanted me to die. I don't hate you because you hate me. I don't want you, I don't want you to lose everything even though you took everything from me. I want everybody to win. If you can hear my voice, I want you to win. I'm talking to people that have lied on me. I'm talking to the people that have given up on me. I'm talking to the people that have walked out on me after I gave you everything. I'm talking to you. I want you to win. I want everybody to win. That's how you know you've used the pain. Not to inflict pain, but you've converted that pain into fuel. And so there needs to be a conversation on the inside of you about conversion convert the pain into fuel, not payback. Payback is for punks. I don't need you to hurt like you hurt me. I want you to win because I want to be better. I got to be bigger. I got to be the better human being. I got to be the one who is existing that's life-giving. I got to be the one that can do better. I got to be the one that after you knock me off of the mountain, after you push me off of the hill, after you drag me off the staircase I was climbing, after I wipe the blood out of my eyes and spit up whatever I need to spit up and cough up whatever I need to cough up, I'm coming back to help you. I need everybody to win. Pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. The question is, can you leave where you've been? Can you close the gap between pain and promise? So it's time to come face to face with pain. Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, how much more can you take? Ask yourself the question, is this all you got? The more you run and the more you lift and the more you train and the more you dance and the more you sing and the more you advance into the beauty, the brilliance of your future, the more that you move forward and you advance and you do it for your mother, you do it for your father, you do it for the one that believed in you, you do it for God himself who put you on this planet to make an impact and leave a legacy. Ask the pain one question, is this all you have? Is this all you got? Well, I'm lifting these weights. I know it hurts, but ask that dumbbell. Is that all you got? Ask that treadmill. Is that all you got? When you're in rehearsal, when you're practicing again, when you're beating on your crab, ask yourself, is this all you got? Self, I got more in me. You thought you were empty, but you had a quarter tank. Some of you had half a tank. Some of you had three quarters of a tank. There's more in you. My content creators, my entrepreneurs, my musicians, come on, my keynote speakers, my captains of industries, my CEOs, from the captain to the cashier, there is more in you. It hurts when we're in the, when we're in the gym. It hurts when we're lifting these weights and we're trying to accomplish a goal. It hurts, it's painful, it's daunting, it's Cumbersome. I don't want to do it. I'm sweating. I'm, I'm bleeding. I'm crying. I'm suffering. But after I've suffered, there is a reward. Stay at home father, stay at home mother, lawyer, doctor, hygienist, author. I don't know who you are, where you're from, but there's more in you. You may be hurting. You may be dying on the inside, but you still got life left. 
You gave them everything you had, and they left you for dead. I know what that feels like to be left for dead after you gave everything you had. I know what it feels like. You give, and you pour, and you sow, and you believe, and you give them everything you have, and they leave you for dead. And you are either going to lie in a state of paralysis or feel the pain. The truth of the matter is, if you can feel it, you still got life left in you. Close the gap between pain and promise. The gap is closing. The gap is closing. The gap is closing. The gap is closing today. Use the pain! Use the pain! Use the pain! The first priority to the ninja is to win without fighting. Focus on the future for 50% and on the present for 40% and on the past for 10%. You must be on your toes consistently, yet but relaxed. Move with your feet and the hands will follow. To become strong, powerful, or famous is really nothing special. No more talk. I'm sick of people talking. Train. The time is now to work. Apply just the right amount of force. Never too much. Never too little. Walk in a single path. Become neither cocky with victory nor broken with defeat. You are not just fighting one opponent, you are fighting the unknown. The wrong brush on the battlefield is not something that is forgiven easily. Steady, accurate, and fierce. If you don't have these three qualities, you cannot enforce the power. If you do, then the power has to be powerful. Train tirelessly to defeat the greatest enemy, and that is yourself, and to discover the greatest warrior, and that is yourself. Happiness is the supreme satisfaction that life offers. Dispel dissatisfaction and sorrow. Rethink the source to find happiness. This art does not mean you're invincible, but it means that you never give up. You worked the past pain. You overcame present disappointment. You didn't cave in to your doubts. You faced your fears. You learned to laugh. You learned to forgive. You have mastered the ability to love. You realize how little you actually know. Remember, that for every technique you think you can fall back on, there is a counter for it. Or there are times when it cannot be used. When real battle comes, you must remember that some things will not be applicable. Don't think that any one technique is quintessential. You must remain in a constant state of healthy revelation. The techniques of your opponent are revealed. The changing of the seasons is revealed. What to do in the changing of the seasons is revealed to the humble. There should be no fighting that does not follow these rules. Therefore, the enemy who stands against the laws of nature has lost his battle before he begins the fight. People who cannot respect others for their good qualities. People who only look at the bad in others are no good to themselves. By looking at only the bad points, you open yourself up to the reality that in a real encounter, you will probably be killed. You must see the good in people. Enduring to the end, no matter what happens, preserving with life, persevering through life's greatest challenges despite being prepared for death at any time is actually the secret. 
I call this the art of awareness. This is the beauty and the brilliance of awareness to know one's weaknesses, to know one's strengths, to know your opponent. This is the revelation of mastery. You must always be aware and you must always be at peace. Don't have a fixed idea in your head. Use everything you've learned until now. Any place you can breathe, any room that you walk in, any table that you sit at, you can master the moment. Breathe and walk in mastery. Man, let's go! It's time! You got one life to live. It's time to get it done. I don't know who you are, where you're from, but get it done! It's time to listen! It's time to focus! What haven't you been able to accomplish? What has stopped you? What has haunted you? Why are you losing sleep over it? All roads lead back to what you're focusing on and who you're listening to. Energy flows where focus goes. So what are you focused on? If you haven't been able to get it done, today marks the first day of the best days of your life. So where focus goes, energy flows. I'm talking to you. If you're going to get it done, I need you to listen and focus. At all costs, protect your peace. If you're going to get it done, you got to let some things go. Stop waiting to feel like it. Stop waiting until you see it. Stop waiting for somebody to come and save you. Nobody's coming to rescue you. The problem with many of you is that you're focused on your fears. You're focused on the risk more than you are the reward. The prize goes to the hardest worker in the room. The question is, how bad do you want this? The problem with many of you is that you're not tired enough. You're focused on the pain of the process more than you are the glory on the other side. You're listening to the wrong people. You're listening to the wrong voices. It's time to pull that energy from fear. Pull that energy away from doubt. How bad do you want this? If you can hear my voice, I'm just wondering if you are bold enough, if you are daring enough, if your faith is outrageous enough to take a chance on yourself. It's time to manifest! It's time to get it done! Fight! Fight! Fight for your future! It may hurt, but get it done. With tears in your eyes, get it done. If nobody believes in you, get it done. If the person you love most walks out on you, get it done. If your children don't believe in you, get it done. If your spouse don't believe in you, get it done. It's always impossible until it's done. So get it done. Over the course of my life, I've come to realize that in order to get things done, there are some things I've got to get over. And that's the problem with many of you is that you're not over the relationship gone bad. You're not over the job that you lost. You're not over the person that walked out on you, the people and the places where you've experienced trauma and anguish. You're not over it. You're not over the fear. You're not over the anxiety. You don't smile anymore. You don't laugh anymore. You don't love like you used to. And there are some things you're going to have to get over. You have not been able to get it done because you're carrying so much weight from the past don't feel like it but newsflash stop waiting 
to feel it. At the end of the day, you can listen to a million motivational speeches, but you are going to have to wake up and make a decision to get it done. The moment you are no longer willing to tolerate where you are, everything changes. Nobody's going to be able to pull you out of the murky water, out of this muddy, bloody, painful, miserable place that you're in. You're going to have to make up your mind. Enough is enough. I'm getting out of this place. And I got stuff to do. I've got a destiny to fulfill. Are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to let go of some things? Are you willing to put the work in? Are you ready to be consistent? Are you tired of this version of yourself? Get over the pain. Get over the trauma. Get over the betrayal. Get over who left you. Get over who lied on you. Get over it. If you're going to get it done, you've got to get over it. Release the pain. Release the unforgiveness. Release the fear. If you're going to get it done, you're going to have to eliminate all distractions and put your blinders on. I don't know what your goal is. Let the world reject you. Let the world close doors on you. Let the world tell you no. I'm just wondering, can you dig deep inside yourself? The future goes to the hardest worker in the room. You have everything you need to get started. Stop waiting for the weather to change in your life. Stop waiting for the perfect conditions. Stop waiting for a handout. Stop waiting for everybody to believe in you and cheer for you and affirm you. Life knocked you in the mouth years ago and you haven't hit back yet. You hit back with determination. You hit back with focus. You hit back when you listen. You hit back when you are disciplined. You hit back with resilience. Get in the ring and hit back. It's time to get up and hit back. Stand in a mirror and tell yourself, I've got a destiny to fulfill. It's simple, but it's not easy. But all you have is all you need. It's the start that stops most people. Start now. If you are alive, you have another opportunity to begin again. A new opportunity. Get up and get after it. It's not about scrolling through social media and looking at people on vacations and looking at the people that are projecting the highlights of their life. It's not about that. It's about can you do better than you did yesterday? If you're walking through or walked out of or survived the worst trauma and pain of your life, believe that this is the first day of the best days of your life. Get up! Get up! Wake up! There's always another level. And it's not about beating the man or woman that's standing in the room with you. It's about beating the man and the woman that's in the mirror. Can you do better than you? Can you do better than you did yesterday? That's all I want to ask you. Can you do better? You may be tired. You may be broken. You may be hurting. People may have betrayed you, lied on you, left you, but you refuse to give up. There are going to be days when you are not going to feel like waking up. You are not going to feel like getting out of the bed. You are tired of yourself. You are tired of looking at the face in the mirror that you see. You are tired of maybe the way that your body looks, or the money that you have, or the people that you are connected to. There are going to be days when you are going to be tired of being you. And you got two options. You can give up or get up. This is the day that everything changes. Get up! Run!
c'est quoi Begin waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning. You may have to lose sleep for a week so that you can accomplish what it is that you've been destined to accomplish. What you were born to contribute to humanity. And so I know it hurts and I know it's expensive. Everything you need to get to this next level is inside of you. But if you don't count up the cost of what it's going to take and if you are not willing to pay that price, You cannot have your future. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Just get in a mirror and start speaking life over yourself. You're making progress. This needs you to be 1% better than you were yesterday. Get up. You got a day to conquer. Rise and grind, baby. Let's go. Thank you, Lord, for giving me one more day, one more opportunity, one more meal, one more outfit on my back. Thank you for that one opportunity. If you haven't been able to get up, something inside of you has to snap. You've been insecure long enough. You've been unfit long enough. You've been unqualified long enough. You've been overlooked long enough. You've been undervalued long enough. You've been in this cave. You've been in this deep, dark prison of obscurity and uncertainty and doubt and fear. This is the day you come out of your tomb. In this very moment, you have an opportunity. Seize the opportunity. I'm talking to that person that keeps saying, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna make more money, I'm gonna learn a new skill, I'm gonna make bigger connections, I'm gonna invest in myself. And day after day, you fail. I know you don't feel up to the task. I know you've got some doubt and you've got some fear and you've got some uncertainty and you hate the image that you see in the mirror and you hate the way your money looks and your relationships look and people that you've given your all to keep walking out on you. I know you feel stuck in reverse. I know you feel like you're underpaid and undervalued and overlooked, but listen, get up. This is the day that everything changes. You've got to do what is required in order to manifest. Get up and get after it. So take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. It's a new day. Control all delete. Control yourself, alter your thinking, and delete negativity. Period. What are you made of? What is your DNA? What is your mentality? What are the skill sets? Come on, start to write down the vision. Believe that this is the first day of the best days of your life. Get up and get after it. You are here by design. You are listening to this talk by design. Every day, every single day is a new beginning. Every decision you make is either bringing you to your destiny or taking you from your destiny. Now some of you, you gotta take everything you have on the inside and claw your way back to right standing. Sometimes you gotta dig deep inside. I'm talking to that person that keeps failing the mission. Appreciate what has happened. Appreciate the people that walked out on you. Appreciate the people that hurt you. Appreciate the people that overlooked you. The people that slept on you. Appreciate it. I want you to get this mentality in your head. Every day, you pay. You pay. You may get two hours of sleep in seven days so that you can accomplish what it is that you've been destined to accomplish. Everything you need to get to this
this next level is inside of you. There's always another level. Seize the opportunity. And every day, every single day, gives you that new opportunity. So if you don't have the to-do list, get a to-do list. If you haven't planned the day, start planning your day the night before. If you don't have a morning routine, get a morning routine. Start your morning with prayer and meditation. If you're not tracking your progress, start tracking your progress. If you don't have accountability partners, you need to get accountability partners. If you have not identified the roadblocks, if you have not identified the kryptonite, if you have not identified the hurdles, what has hindered your forward progress, identify those things. This is your day! Get up and get after it! Remove yourself from the list of people that have disappointed you, that have lied to you, that have let you down. You are number one on that list. Remove yourself. The real you is breathing down your neck, begging you to manifest. Stop lying to yourself. Stop letting you down. You gotta kill the blame game. Stop blaming it on the person that walked out on you. Stop blaming it on the person that overlooked you. Stop blaming it on the person that undervalued you. Stop blaming it on the person that did not promote you, that did not see it, that did not believe it. Stop blaming everybody and look yourself in the mirror. It's your fault you failed. You started the year with a little motivation and a few ideas and it all tanked before February. And the thing you gotta ask yourself is, am I gonna repeat my history or will I blaze a new trail? Because history for many of you is insecurity. History for many of you is depression and anxiety. And that substance you can't shake and that person you can't leave. History for many of you is, they're better than me. History for many of you is, nobody will show up if I build it. I don't have the time. I'm not good enough. It's time to get out of the way. It is because of you that you are not where you want to be. You are the issue. It's you. Your issue is you. Nobody has lied to you more than you. And so here's what I need you to do. Go find a mirror. Go for a walk. Go for a drive. Tell yourself this is my year! You gotta be willing to do what 98% of the people in this world are unwilling to do. You gotta eat differently. You gotta work differently. You gotta think differently. You gotta talk differently. You gotta walk differently. If you want elevation, if you want next level, if you wanna see this thing differently this year, everything you do has to change. Your insecurity has been in the way too long. Your jealousy, your envy has been in the way too long. The fear you've been wrestling with has been in the way too long. Get out of the way! It's time to stop watching 2% of the Earth's population crush it, win, execute, finish what they start, do what they say they're gonna do. Snap out of it! You got work to do! I get it, I get it. If we pull up your history, we'll find a lot of brokenness. We'll find a lot of trauma. We'll find a lot of empty places. If we pull up your history, we'll find a lot of failures. This must be the year that you are not defined by your history, but you fulfill your destiny. Why are you here? What were you placed here to do? Get to work, get to work, get to work. Because if you continue to lie to yourself, you won't be able to diagnose and treat your condition, your dysfunction, your disorder in order to treat it and change it. It must be identified and once you identify it, you gotta accept this reality. And the problem with many of you is you have not accepted the fact that you are lazy. You have not accepted the fact that you are inconsistent. You can't diagnose what you have not identified. 
Sometimes you need to go find a mirror and tell yourself with tears in your eyes, I am the problem. Once we stop accusing everybody else for our inconsistency and our lack of execution, all of a sudden the world opens up. We all need to get serious about our lives and ask ourselves the question, what is my God-given destiny? Why am I here? Why have I survived? Some of the most brilliant minds of our generation are high school and college dropouts. Let me ask you a question. When are you gonna drop out of the mentality that you are not enough? Please, please do yourself a favor and dispense with the excuses that you don't have time. Dispense with the excuse that you're not good enough. Dispense with the excuse that nobody will show up if I build it. That too many people are better than me. Drop out of the, I tried it last year and it didn't work. No, you didn't work. Doubt's going to knock at your door, and insecurity's going to knock at your door, and adversity and trial and tribulation's going to knock at your door, and difficult tasks going to knock at your door. And so you need to be prepared. Ready or not, it's coming. Are you prepared? If you're going to win the year, if you're going to win in life, then you got to be prepared. You need perspective, and you need discipline. We get into this information constipation state where it's like we know all these things to do and really it puts us in a state of paralysis because it's like you heard it all before, you've seen it all before. I mean, really, social media has made the world so small, right? Information travels at the speed of light. And so you got all this information. And so we become sedated by information. We become satisfied and content with the fact that we know to do good. But to know to do good and not to do it is a disease. It is wickedness. The time is now to start applying what you know. What's the point of taking notes? What's the point of what's the point of buying courses? What's the point of joining communities? What's the point of making the investment? Some of you have journals full of dreams and no action has been taken. You will find that the men and women that turned the world upside down were the ones who got out of their own way. Get to work. You owe you! A lot of us, we watch. We watch everybody win in every facet of life. We watch the underdog rise under the lights. And we think to ourselves, when is it going to be my time? When is it going to be my time? And in order to be next, you got to see this thing differently. You got to change the way you live, you eat, you walk, you talk, you think. And once you walk in that newness, then you'll be next. When inconvenience becomes pleasure, when you have your mind made up that no matter how you're feeling every day, you're going to give it everything you have. You're going to give, you're going to see, you're going to sow, you're going to serve and give it everything you have. Then all of a sudden the world opens up to you. Come to the resolve this year that dedication, discipline, perspective, preparation, is going to be your new code of conduct. Motivation has an expiration date. And when motivation dies, discipline must take its place. The only way you're gonna do, the only way you're gonna accomplish, the only way you're gonna execute is if discipline takes the place of your motivation. But until that motivation expires and evolves into discipline, you will never become who God has called you to become. First we conquer the day, and then we execute the week, and that week turns into a month, and that month turns into a quarter, and that quarter turns into a year, and then all of a sudden you look up and you're no longer just this motivated onlooker. You are a disciplined, desperate, dangerous, Fulfiller of destiny. What in the world are you waiting for? There are people that are depending on you. God placed you in this world to do something. Get to work.
I know it's cold, but are you courageous enough to step into uncharted territory, beating on your crab day and night? I need you to disappear for the next 30 days. What does that look like? 720 hours dedicated to the future. Where focus goes, energy flows. The problem is you put too much energy into Netflix. You put too much energy into distractions. You put too much energy into entertainment. You put too much energy into things that are not feeding your purpose and destiny. Can you walk away from everything? Life has knocked you to the ground. You have survived the greatest traumas of your life. How tired are you of where you are right now? How bad do you want to get to that next level? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up? Who are you willing to let go to get where it is that you want to be? See, everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to climb mountains. Everybody wants to be praised and celebrated. But nobody wants to sacrifice. Nobody wants to put in the work. Nobody wants to let go of every single distraction. Can you learn how to say no to what's hurting you? No to what's stopping you. No to the people that don't believe in you. The fakes and the phonies and the people that keep saying that they'll support you when you get there, but they leave you when you arrive. Why are you here? And what are you going to do about it? Because the truth of the matter is, we have a purpose, we have a destiny, we have fulfillment, we've got connections to make, we've got people to meet, we've got rooms to walk in, we've got tables to sit at, and I'm just wondering if you are willing, if you are courageous enough, if you have the faith, if you're bold enough to sit down for 30 days and write down what it is that's killing you. Can you walk away from everything for 30 days? Just one month? 720 hours. Imagine who you could be in 30 days. You got one life to live. Rain, sleep, or snow. The time is now. I got three words for you. Shut it down. Log out of the social media. Get off the internet unplug and evaluate where you are and where you're supposed to be. And I know you're broken and I know you're tired and I know you're weary and I know you're confused and, and I know that you've got questions and I know you're fractured and I know you're bleeding in places nobody can see. But if you shut it down, you can heal. You're standing at the precipice, the edge of the greatest move in your life. And, and, and the time is now like never before to take a leap of faith. It takes faith to jump off of the edge. It takes faith to step into your purpose. It takes faith to step into your destiny. It takes faith to pull away from everything that is familiar, to step into uncharted territory, to become the person you were born to be. It takes faith. Can you disappear for 30 days? The first person that needs to be influenced in your life is you. It's you. You can't lead anybody. You can't go anywhere unless you have awakened yourself on the inside to follow a specific plan. Write it out. I need you to disappear. Life is not due to the ground. There are people that have tried to bury you alive and you survive. Are you bold enough? Are you radical enough in your hunger and your thirst to go after what it is that you believe is yours? Are you crazy enough? Are you courageous enough to disappear for 30 days? Come back and shock the world! Can you suffer now that you live the rest of your life a champion? Here's the reality. You will always be where you are until you acknowledge the leeches in your life. 
It is time for you to navigate through the conversation, comb through your contacts. There are people that are taking from you everything, taking your time, taking your energy, taking your thought life, reprogramming and reconditioning you to do something that you have not been destined to do. And the time is now to get tied to people that are gonna help to position you and lock you in a place where you can fulfill purpose and destiny for 30 days, 720 hours. Imagine if you began to write down the people that have not fed into your purpose, the people that have not fed into your destiny, the people that have lied in your face, the fakes, the phonies, the frauds. Can you identify what has kept you broken? What has kept you broke? What has kept you defeated? What has kept you covered under the blankets of anxiety and stress and overwhelm? Your DNA has been mutated by people that are beneath you. And it's nothing wrong with having people in your life that you serve, that you love. But you're trying to make business moves with people that don't think like you. They don't walk like you. They don't sacrifice like you. They're not willing to put in the blood, the sweat, the tears behind closed doors. A man is rewarded in public for what he does in private. Think over the things you've discussed with people. Go through the process. Go through the mud. Run in the rain. Dance in the snow. Inhale, exhale. I know it's cold on the other side, but it's time for you to cross over because you're too comfortable. Disappear for 30 days. Come back and shock the world. Who you are today has gotten you as far as you're going to get. If you're going to get any further, you gotta reinvent yourself. And if you're going to reinvent yourself, you've got to shut it down for 30 days. You still keep trying to walk into your future fractured, broken, hurting. You need to walk into your future whole, conditioned, ready to grab the people that believed in you before you made it to the top. Go back and get them, but first you've got to condition yourself. You're fractured, you're broken, you're under anxiety and depression, and you've even been borderline suicidal at times. You've lost loved ones. Come on, who am I talking to? I'm talking to that person that's tired of where they are, and you are bold enough, you are crazy enough, you are courageous enough to shut it down for 30 days. You've talked about it enough. You've talked to your haters about it. You've talked to your supporters about it. You've posted about it. You've shared about it. You've written about it. Now it's time to put the work in. Disappear for 30 days. A warrior that is angry is at war with himself. Do not under any circumstances depend on a partial feeling. Think lightly of yourself and deeply of the world. You are calm, but alert. Relaxed, but ready. Smooth, but sharp. Humble, but confident. Forget your sadness, your anger, grudges, and hatred. Let them pass like smoke caught in a breeze. Do not indulge yourself in such feelings. You must look beyond the wound to win the fight. Where you are hurting, where you are bleeding, where you are crawling, keep going. Be relentless. We must win mentally before we see whatever the improbable feat Make up in your mind, I've already won. Be committed, be fully persuaded to peace, for without which you will never fulfill your purpose. With everything that you think, and every word that you speak, and every move that you make, let peace and harmony be your portion. You must decide in this moment to execute 
like you never have. Execute in the face of adversity. Execute in the presence of doubt and fear. Execute. Get the job done. After you have spoken, take action. For if you remain still, you open the door to an idle mind. You must dispense with the notion that conversation will change your life. It is only strategy, plan, and execution that alters the very fabric of our existence. Focus on infinite purpose. You've got to learn to utilize the space between you and your opponent. Always observe your opponent very carefully. Watch them, study them, examine their movements. You need to use the first seconds of every encounter to evaluate the length of their play. You will win the war without when you win the war within. Won the war with yourself, you will win the war with every opponent. It's what you do behind the scenes. It's the work you put in. The sacrifices made when no one is looking. When the world is sleeping and you are serving. It is only then, at that moment, you will find deeper fulfillment. It's what we do when no one is with us that uncovers the true mastery of the ninja. The first priority to the ninja is to win without fighting. The limitations of a man's soul is tested before his work ethic is seen. How you start is how you will finish with nothing in your hand and no one in your corner but a dream in your heart. Start with what you have. We have to have the courage, the poise, and the resiliency to begin. Do not wait to be understood. Do not wait to be supported. Do not wait to be liked, loved, and shared. Start from zero. To start from zero is an aggressive invitation into self-confidence. We must start with ourselves. If we start from zero, there is no end to the number of techniques that will emerge. There is a way to win in every facet of life. In the room of negotiation, in the world of action, there is a way to win there are techniques to be executed, but nothing can be done unless we first believe. We must start with ourselves. Much of life moves at the speed of the connections we make and the questions we ask. We must remain hungry for true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You must throw away your bad habits to good good. Your life is on the line, your future. So practice well. Move with your feet and the hands will follow. You are not just fighting one opponent. You are fighting the unknown. You are stepping into uncharted territories and you must endure to the end. What wakes you up in the morning and gets you going? 
Why is it that you want what you want? Why are you doing what you are doing? Every thought has an origin. Find your origin. We must understand the foundation of every action. That it all starts with a feeling and a thought. The true art of the ninja is to know one's limitations, boundaries, strengths, and weaknesses. The beauty and the brilliance of the ninja lifestyle is one of self-awareness. Breathe in. Breathe. Breathe life into the weapon. Don't take life away from it. Keep walking. Because walking is life. Those who desire only technique will never understand the art. It's everything beyond that. Where are you? How did you get there? Where were you? And where are you going? Self-awareness is the key to the future and the way of the ninja. Do not fear death and never stray away from the way. There's still life left in you. You are still breathing. Rise. You must move forward in strength. Even when pain tries to persuade your mood to change. Do not succumb to the depression, the anxiety, the rage, the hatred, or the regret. Live in purpose. You must eclipse the pain of your past with the power of your future. You keep trying to win and you're wounded because you have not confronted the dysfunction, the embarrassment, the emptiness. Let the fear fade and let faith invade. The purposeful decisions that you make today will eclipse the pain of your past. Resist the temptation to give in in times when trials are too heavy to win. Get it done every single day, no matter the task. Why on earth am I here? And once you discover why you are here, it is only then that you will be able to manifest and become who you were destined to be. Why are you here? What is your design? Why did you survive? Someone who can rise is someone who is not dead yet. You're getting up today. You are the governor and the guardian of your attitude. See, each day we are presented with a series of conflicts between the right way and the easy way. You can't have the throne until you are willing to remove yourself from the seat of convenience. Your greatest opponent is an enemy you cannot see. The fight for the future, the fight to rise, this is in your head, it's all in your head. You can either live in the pain of your past or you can start living in the present. The spirit of comparison is controlling you and crippling you. People are rewarded in public for what they've practiced for years in private. I will evolve! I will rise! Whatever did not kill you only made you stronger! Purpose is bigger than the giant that stands before you. Those who rise are those who have mastered the push. 
I'm kicking in every door that was locked in my face. Doubt is not bigger than your purpose. Fear is not bigger than your purpose. Insecurity is not bigger than your purpose. Your purpose is everything. I know you're beaten. I know you're bleeding. I know you're insecure. I know you lost a loved one. I know you lost a job. I know it hurts, but get up. If nobody sticks their hand out to pick you up, get yourself up and run. When there is nothing left around you, you gotta pull on what's inside of you. This is for my future. This is for my children. This is for my destiny. This is for my legacy. There is no pain that is bigger than my purpose. I will be resilient. I will rewire my thinking. I will emerge. I will evolve. I will be immune to impossibility. The world is waiting for you to rise. Everything changes today. You may be average, you may be ordinary, but you have the opportunity every single day to make extraordinary decisions. And what you do today will determine your future. The future is very expensive. The currency to get to the future, the bridge that we build, it is built on your daily decisions, your habits, your programming, the way that you think, the way that you talk, the way that you walk. Blood, sweat, tears, sacrifice, people that you have to let go, sleep that you have to lose, multiple jobs that you have to work, hours on end of study, beating on your craft every single day. It's not easy, but it's worth it. There are going to be nights you're going to cry yourself to sleep. There are going to be times you're going to want to throw in the towel. But if you keep going, your future self will thank you. If you can hear your future self talking to you now, the future you would say thank you for not giving up. Thank you for not throwing in the towel. Thank you for not allowing the despair and the anguish and the anger and the bitterness and the jealousy and the ego to eat away at your progress and your perseverance and your ability to travail and endure. I believe in the future, number one. You gotta get crystal clear about who you believe you've been destined to be. Because everybody's looking to manifest. We are all looking to evolve. We are all looking to level up. What is your life's purpose? What is your destiny? Why on earth are you here? What is it that you can do today to get closer to the fulfillment of that future? To get closer to the manifestation of the future? What are you doing today? What are you giving today? Remember why you had to let some people go. Remember why you're working so hard towards this thing. You're pressing, you're pushing, you're clawing, you're dragging yourself through mud and through murky water. Come on, remember why you're doing what you're doing. It may be difficult. It may seem impossible. The moment that you discover why you're here, spend the rest of your life Execute. There are going to be times when you give everything you have. And everything that you have is not enough. Push through the pain. Push through the anguish. Push through the brokenness. Do not stop. It's the no quit mentality. Wherever you are now is not where you're going to end up. You are special, and you've been designed to change the world. So many of us want so many different things, 
and our life is filled with entertainment and recreation and people that we have not appraised. Have you appraised your connections? Have you done a scrupulous evaluation of everyone in your life? Are they assets or are they liabilities? Yes, you want the future, but what's your plan? And then the moment that you create the plan and you've ironed out all the kinks and you're crystal clear and you've got this plan, you've got this aim, this target, then you gotta stay committed. With tears in your eyes, you gotta be committed when your brain is hurting. You gotta be committed when you haven't gotten sleep in a few days. You gotta be committed. You gotta plow through that depression, that heaviness, that weariness and you gotta cling to the joy of the thought of the future that if you finish this course, then there is a reward at the end of this pain. You may feel as though you are not able to breathe now. You may be inundated with responsibility and it seems as though there is no way out of this. You have to be grateful for the ground that you've gained and guard the ground that you've gained. Celebrate the small wins. If we keep looking at the big picture, if we keep looking at the end game, if that's all we fix our eyes on, then we'll get off kilter, we'll lose our footing and we'll walk around discouraged because you're not gonna just wake up in one day and fulfill destiny. It's the process that's perfecting us. It's the ins and the outs and the nuances. It's the song and the dance between destiny and the journey and the process and the promise. And we've got to learn how to execute the day. Give us this day. We've got to learn how to execute the day. Get you conquer the day. I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but I'm not where I used to be. And so we've got to celebrate the small wins, those mental wins, those emotional wins, those relational wins, those financial wins, those spiritual wins. We've got, we've got to celebrate, celebrate. And then we've got to be kind, not only to others throughout our process, but we've got to be kind to ourselves. The problem with many of us is that we're not kind to ourselves. Be kind to yourself. You can be assertive, you can be direct, you can be firm, but you can have a little empathy and a little kindness, not only on others, but on yourself. Because the truth of the matter is, you are not going to always feel like doing what you were designed to do, okay? And so we've got to condition ourselves for the stretch. With gratitude, we're going to need that coupled with patience. The future takes time to manifest. The future takes time because you are beautifully equipped to get the results you are currently getting and there are some bigger results that you are after and in order to get those results, in order to manifest that very specific future, you are going to have to acquire a different set of skills, a different work mentality. It's going to require you to become a different version of yourself. Elevation is all over you. Okay, next you got to seize the opportunity. There are so many opportunities for you to grow, so many opportunities for you to learn, so many opportunities for you to share, for you to give, for you to understand, for you to think, for you to be quiet, for you to speak. And you've got to know when to do, what to do, why to do. This is the paradigm of the future. The future has a specific paradigm that you have to execute. You have to walk in this. You're going to have to move from limited beliefs and you're going to have to move into limitless believing. You have to know your boundaries, establish your guardrails. You got to know your weaknesses and your strengths. Do not stop. It's the no quit mentality. Our lives don't get better by chance. They get better by change. Change is one of the necessary laws of life. Remember this, action and adaptability create opportunity. Adapt and overcome and watch everything change before your eyes. Adaptability isn't just some secret for survival. It is the power to build the future. Adaptability is the capacity to be modified for a new purpose to be moved this way 
and still punch through targets and reach my goals and be everything I've been called to be, but I've got to adapt to the times. Adaptability requires movement. Adaptability requires growth. Adaptability requires wisdom and knowledge and understanding and revelation and awareness. We've got to be able to recognize when we're outdated, when we need an upgrade, when we've got to go to that next level, and I can't be embarrassed about it. Adaptability is not buckling under pressure. Adaptability is understanding that in order for me to have this lifestyle that I see in my head, I'm going to have to raise my standards. This is an adjustment. This is a modification that in times past, this version of me was good enough, but it only got me where I am. And in order for me to go to that next level, something inside of me has to change. So when you face storm, when you face adversity, when you face trial, when you face tribulation, in the eye of the storm, in the middle, in the core of your devastation, when you are faced with opposition, that's when you raise the heat. You don't change your message, you change your methodology. Are you understanding me? Adaptability is not buckling under pressure. Adaptability is not losing your moral compass. Adaptability is raising your voice. And so the harder life hits me, the harder I'm going to fight, the harder I'm going to believe, the harder I'm going to keep pushing, I'm going to keep going, I will persevere, and I'm going to build resilience. And so the harder life hits, the stronger I get. You've got problem-solving skill. You've got a resilience. You have a determination. You have a measure of commitment that nobody in the room has because you've been able to adapt. And for many of us, we are in the halftime of our destiny. And if you're going to win, you're are going to have to make the adjustments, the necessary modifications to have your future. When I become more flexible, more agile, more adaptable, another thing that happens is that we build our inner resilience. And this isn't just about honing in on your problem solving skills, but resilience literally changes your brain. It changes your operating systems. It shifts your behavior. Resilience empowers you to build new habits. It's not running from your programming. It's upgrading. It's taking it to the next level. The necessary growth strategies, necessary modification, personality adjustment, attitude upgrades, the necessary, the wise, adapt themselves to the circumstances like water molds itself to the picture. To understand the revelation of adaptability is to realize that life is lived on levels. I've got angles, I've got approaches, that destiny is in the details. It's how I see this thing. It's how I can adjust my thinking. It's how I can upgrade my inner software. At some point, you gotta sit back and think to yourself, you know what? I've been here too long. I've thought like this too long. I've hurt too long. I've been fractured long enough. I've been depressed long enough. You know what? I've been here too long. It's time for me to go. We all have to get here where we realize we have not adapted to the current times. And this is not a departure from authenticity. This is not losing yourself. This is finding your next level. The question is, are you willing to adapt? Adaptability is the bridge to the future. I need to be able to adapt cognitively. I gotta be able to adapt emotionally. My personality, my behavior, my language, my thinking. I've got to be able to adapt. And it is only when I'm willing to accept this reality that I can have my future. When I become more flexible, more agile, more adaptable, another thing that happens is that we build our inner resilience. And this isn't just about honing in on your problem-solving skills, but resilience literally changes your brain. It shifts your behavior. It's time to break through. You've lost long enough. You've been in your learning season long enough. It's time to apply what you've learned. 
Adaptability is not buckling under pressure. Adaptability is not losing your moral compass. Adaptability is raising your voice. You got to start thinking about the future. You've got to start thinking about sustainability. You got to start thinking about future generations. Your perspective, how you see this thing, how you approach this thing, your the angles that you take, the approaches, the mentalities, just one little tweak in the game and there is a future for your family. And 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 this is the power of understanding that if I can make a few tweaks, if I if I can make a few adjustments, if I can see this thing just a hair differently, Winner by a hair. Have you ever heard that? There are champions that win by a hair because they made an adjustment. There are golf players and basketball players and football players and soccer players and fighters and warriors and NASCAR drivers and champions and lecturers and teachers and students, movie directors and artists and people all over the globe who have made adjustments, who have adapted to a circumstance, who have adapted, who have modified and tweak their game and beat on their craft and got the trophy. This is why there's power in mentorship because a mentor will show you something you didn't see. A coach will pull something out of you that you never knew was there. The ability to adapt, to make a tweak, to make an adjustment. It's the group of employees that's been called to work two more hours. It's the team that's been called to win a championship in the snow or rain or sleet or the weather's changed or now all of a sudden the crowd is no longer cheering your name. Can you adapt? This is the question. This is the golden ticket. Everybody wants to win and everybody wants new zip codes and area codes and everybody wants impact and influence. But if I don't have adaptability, I'll never have my future.